uh, welcome along everyone to a fab little tutorial abstract in every way so uh, we've placed down the colors uh, into the water on the watercolor paper this is still working uh, dead flat it's not on an angle at all and the uh, colors individually the inks that's what we're using for a start placed out uh, either with a dropper or dipping into the ink using Big Brian there just to place it down gradually. Now we don't move the brush head around too much because this would mix all the colours a bit too much. It's far better to let them blend by touching each colour and let it bleed into uh, one another. Big Brian being the ideal shape to allow this to spread gradually around the area we don't want small brushes big brushes are the order of the day we're not aiming for any particular shapes at the moment we just want some clean areas of color and some nice merged areas as well the one thing we are trying to avoid is getting too much color liquid color around the vase area that we've just lightly penciled out to begin with adding a little bit more water just on big brian just to dive in there and uh, uh, add a little bit of fluidity in there and now this will happen all the paints will gather the water and the paint and what we just need to do is dive in with a bit of tissue a decent sized bit of tissue enough to absorb the excess paint and uh, that can lift that off Dangerous Dave now, doing a bit of work, he's going, he's diving in with a bit of water for a start and we're just moving shapes about. We can start to think at this point, shapes of flowers, where they're actually uh, sitting and also uh, clumps of flowers as well. So we've got vase work, we're going in with our light blue ink initially and then uh, purple paint so uh, dropping that in under the vase to negatively pick it out and again using the line of the brush to get a nice uh, simple shaping time for a bit of Miss Riggard's work She's going to dive in with Perillion Green. Now this is where we can start to form some understandable shapes. So we're just dragging that through to get some stems in and they're obviously going to start from the uh, center and the top of the vase. And we're going to go with those uh, left, right and center. Some draping down, but this starts to give some understanding to the overall composition. light blue liquid ink just pick some of that up from either you've placed it out in a uh, little dish or from the bottle at least if it's placed out you can control the strength or thickness of the paint to a degree but obviously liquid inks are all going to be the same thickness so you've not got that control that you have with uh, tube paints but as you see we are mixing the two together otherwise it gets quite expensive with 20 or 30 bottles of liquid ink as opposed to using the uh, uh, tube paints in tandem with the inks remember the shapes you're placing there little dots drag some lines and then we're just returning back to where the paint has settled. So where the reds have settled, we go back in and we're getting some uh, thicker or richer pigment on there. And again, it's still going to be damp, so that will bleed out and form new shapes. It really is experimentation and pure enjoyment of painting. So you're not forcing it, you're just going with what's been offered so far. 
and you've got to that point by just putting it down and letting it bleed. Couldn't be simpler, could not be simpler. The key is not to try and uh, uh, describe it, to uh, overpaint it, to force ideas too early on. Just let the ideas come to you. Just sit there with a glass of champagne and just wait for the ideas to appear. And then think, ah oh, yes, that would be a nice idea just there. Now with some drier paint at the top, because it's going to remain wetter in the middle, the more liquid in there, we can start carving out a few little shapes. Perillion green, always a good one, good dark green, it's an artist quality, Windsor and Newton. Again, each visit will tell you how wet the area is. If it's soaking, it's just going to bleed in. If it's semi-dry, it's going to just balloon out a little. And if it's dry, you can paint uh, very specific shapes. A few lines, a few stems through the bars. Again, more sense starts to appear. And then we can start to try and define some centers of flowers as well. So where they uh, start to appear, we can enhance the centers and this will draw the eye to those. And then really, you'll just uh, magically work out how the flower is individually. So I always pick a couple out, put a little bit on, and uh, see how far, uh, or sorry, how easy it is to distinguish a flower. Once there's enough information there, I'll leave it. Because you can get a bit overexcited and describe it a bit too uh, uh, vividly, in detail. We don't need all of that. Just a suggestion is more than enough. Again, just picking up hints of the colour that's settled. Just adding them on. We can keep adding a little bit more until we get a bit more definition. But big areas that are semi-described are fine. We don't need everything uh, uh, with all the information on. A few pockets of detailed stuff, more than enough. And we're working light to dark as ever, so the further through the painting you get, the uh, darker the tones you uh, really should be using. Quite a strong line of uh, tube purple at the bottom. That really picks it out, anchors it down. Now we've got a little bit of Chinese white, so any white will do. You just need to apply it fairly thickly, but the thing is to just get it to the right liquid liquidity to be able to apply it. If it's too thick, you'll find you won't be able to get much on. If it's too thin, it will just blend in and disappear. 
So just a little bit of practice and you can practice directly onto the painting because one or the other will happen and you'll soon get a gauge for it. Also the thing you're looking for is that you'll be working smaller areas as you go through the painting. So big areas for a start, couldn't got much bigger than water and big brian. And now again into smaller areas, so our smaller brush, our delicate Miss Rigori, using dark tones. Purple, Cotman's cream strength, picking out lines again. And each time these will fade back a little bit, but we're starting, we're working with quite vibrant, rich colours right from the uh, beginning. So uh, we're not using tea and really coffee much. Coffee will only bleed out from what we've got in the first place. Still just picking out little details, still using the colours in the area that settled, i.e. the lighter green. And keep sitting back or standing up and looking from a distance because that will give you more of an overall view of the stage that your painting's at. If you're hovering over it too much, you'll get a bit too uh, detailed and specific So almost there guys, you've done a fabulous job. Yours will turn out different to mine, but that is the key. That's your style, that's your approach. And uh, you'll learn an awful lot just by uh, this simple, but really exciting technique. So well done guys. I'll catch you again very, very soon. Thank you.